Good morning, everybody. It's episode nine of the Tom and Kelly Show. Good morning. Today we're going to talk garden tools. And, and I'm ready. I'm I'm all prepared, Kelly. So what do we have to do? Take off your tools <laughs> oh, equipment because we're not doing power tools, Tom. We're not we're doing, doing power tools, doing so we don't tools. need the safety garden equipment. Tools. Safety equipment with power tools for sure, but or or chemicals. But or chemicals. you don't use chemicals not... unless you've got more than a twenty five percent concentration of what? Some invasive Yeah. 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 I mean if you have major problems you're gonna have to use some chemicals, but we're not gonna get into that today. We're gonna talk a lot about hand tools and what we do in the garden. And um another tool that I was people have been asking us to do is this uh selfie stick, and we're not gonna do it yet. Because We're not doing it because we don't know how to use it. We don't know how to use it. It's Let's do this. <laughs> All right. So now we're okay. going to go, and here we go. Kelly's going to show us her. Um, we're going to get out into her potager. Is that how you say it? Or potager? Potager. Potager. English. Okay. You want to talk about this? Yeah. A little bit, Kelly, but um, I've got it all memorized. But basically, <laughs> the, um, in the U.S., we spend about $20 billion a year on gardening equipment and uh the average person will i mean we have about four million people buy hand tools alone each year a lot of them start with a kit and then they replace them as they break and then we spend about a, over 120 dollars a person on uh, garden tools so big numbers big numbers i don't spend that much <laughs> we don't spend I'm that like, much i'm like a mega frug <laughs> and we're going to talk about how to uh how to select tools what are the best tools what are the tools you really need to garden here so take it away kelly here so okay hey here's your clipboard back <laughs> and hey when i get to your favorite tool from this year you talk it up okay okay I definitely so, will so i'm going to start with the, one of the oldest tools that i bought which is my cultivator love my cultivator i think i i started buying tools in 1987 and i made sure they were really good quality i think it was 23 or so when i started to really get into gardening and this is an awesome tool. You can see how wow. worn down it is because I've used it. I've used it with P-Rock. I've used it with gravel at client sites when I'm building some of my jobs that I do contracting with. And this thing has just lasted forever. So this is a four-time cultivator, and it's just great for scratch scratching up the ground, spreading some of those coffee grounds into some of the sites that we have. So this is a really great tool um, from 1987. Um, what else you got in here, boy? Well, I have my absolute favoriteest tool here. This is this is one of my awesomest favoriteest tools right here, and um, this is called a strapped dividing fork, and it's strapped because it's got metal going all the way up. And I actually have put so much force on it that I've actually cracked the strapping. This is a uh, bulldog tool. Bulldog tools are made in England, and the forge started I think in 1763. So I've kind of got a a soft spot in my heart for vintage tools or English tools. I'm kind of snobby that way, but otherwise good old American tools. And um, the great thing about bulldog tools is you can buy them in various lengths. Tom is about a foot taller than me, and the dividing fork he has is about a foot longer than this one, and it's way too tall for me. A dividing fork should be about equal with where the bend of your elbow is to really work well for the height of the person that you are. So if you're somebody that's bought a fork like this and you're really uncomfortable when you use it, it could be because the height of the tool is the length of the tool handle is just too long. So always look for a tool that's got, that's got. Um, yeah, and I, I got exposed to this last year when we uh, were doing some work at the Martin Luther King Community and Learning Center Garden. But um, basically, this is now my favorite tool. I mean, I used it actually to get some garlic mustard out along some Cascade uh, Creek beds there. But it's I just use it perfect. to plant, I use it to dig weeds, I use it to loosen soil up when I need to. This is my go-to tool all the time. It's better than a hand trowel, I think. So if you don't have one, you gotta get one. You gotta get one. Um, my next favorite tool is my shovel, but I have to tell you, I use my fork more than my shovel. Uh, new shovels are really heavy. New shovels have very wide, thick, heavy handles. A shovel should fit in your hand. You need to use it. It should also be at a nice angle so that you can skim like this, and many shovel blades don't do this anymore. This is actually an antique, antique tool that I convinced some friends to give me because they weren't using it, and I used it one time, and I went, oh my gosh, this is the best shovel in the world. What's really awesome about this shovel is that the tip has been ground down, <laughs> and I have my... I was going to say that. That looks exactly like my shovel. Yeah, they, you have to have yeah. a pointed shovel. Gener shovel generally to get into the earth but uh, this one is this great is... because I can grind it down and kind of um, make it sharp it's, yep. it's pretty good so this is an awesome lightweight excellent shovel okay so we got her uh, two of my 
fork, our shovel. Are my secateurs or my pruners. These are Velcro pruners, which are kind of the kind of the standard go-to. But I have to tell you, and this is not a plug for a sponsor, this is not a plug for product placement, but Kirkland makes some pretty great pruners. This is a Felco number two. This is the first pruner I bought in 1987. You can take them apart and sharpen them, which I usually do yearly, and this baby works beautifully. First pruner I ever bought in 1987. I quickly outgrew it with usage, and I went to a 13, which um, is almost as good as a lopper. I forgot to get my loppers off my shelf top. Yeah, loppers. So these are really great pruners, but like I said, Kirkland makes some. And then there's also a company called A.M. Leonard. If you're purchasing things that just don't seem to last, head online to A.M. Leonard. Um, you can get the pro discount of 10% off anybody. And they make a brand also that's really, really close to the Felcos that's just really, really great. They have excellent hoses there. They have excellent um, hose attachments and things that I will also show you. And, and Kelly, they also call those, aren't those bypass pruners? Yeah, those are pruners. bypass pruners instead of an anvil pruner. You don't want to use an anvil pruner because they don't make clean cuts and infection can get in there and wounds don't heal. As Especially if you're cutting green um, live trees and things like that or trimming some, some things because yeah. uh, the blades there bypass each other and they right. make a nice clean cut. So okay. One of, one of my pruning saws, it's a oh, pruning okay. saw and I like it because I can always stick it in my side pocket of my pants. Um, I think it's a camping pruner but it's got great pull and push cutting action so it works on the forward motion and the backward motion really great tool corona makes these and like i said a couple of other camping camping um uh companies make them as well perfect okay a lot of people <coughs> use gloves i'm really bad with gloves because if i start the season without them i tend to forget them every time i garden but if i start the season with them i tend to remember them every time i garden I get the cheapest leather gloves possible. I usually buy three pair at the start of the season because I go through them. I do a lot of digging and I end up with holes in the tips of my fingers. And uh, yeah, so I've got a lot of lefts hanging around to sometime eventually knock <laughs> up the right. And sometimes I just work with one glove. So yeah, I, gloves are gloves are super super helpful. I mean that's that's a perfect example because I I have the same thing and I did uh, I did purchase some new ones this year so I do have. Um, some leather gloves, Those a little softer, nice, soft nice and ones. soft yeah. ones. But, you know, I was telling Kelly, I mean, basically, um, why why do that to your fingers and stuff when you have those tips all worn out? So spend the money, get the gloves, and hopefully get ones that last. I also use these um, these rubber ones. I mean, they you know, your hands can get a little touchy on here, but if I'm just weeding, sometimes this is the best thing. These, these have a nice feel to them, too. They have a nice touch. With your fingers. Um, yeah, but, I mean, it, it does get pretty sweaty in there. But, but these are perfect, if it's, especially after a moist morning or something, if there's a light rain. So these are really well-loved. Are they normally yeah. waterproof when they're new? <laughs> they're generally waterproof. But um, anyway, so these, I guess, are latex covered gloves are perfect for what I do with weeding and stuff like that. So, all right, what's next, Kelly? Watering cans are pretty essential. They really are super helpful when you can't quite get your hose somewhere or you just have to carry some water to a small spot. It's really important to have a removable rose. This is called a rose. Ah, uh, no, I don't have one of those removable one ones, no. Yeah, these are really, really I have hands. two, I have two. And they're yeah. plastic, which well, they won't last. <laughs> English Hawes uh, brand, okay. I got it as a gift. A lot of, I, last year for my birthday, I got rebar, okay? okay. I just, I kind of, I kind of asked for gardening. Yeah. Um, for, for wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, dandelion diggers are nice. I do not like this dandelion digger. I don't know where it came from, but I do know I got it when somebody stole my 1974 <laughs> Air Force issue straight blade screwdriver that was actually my dandelion <laughs> digger. And it was the perfect screwdriver. It was long. It had this gray handle that was rounded on the end. So I didn't get like a repetitive motion injury or what are you doing there, Tom? Um, I've oh, got oh, one yeah. here too. And this is a got, dandy digger. It's a little dandy. I mean, my other one broke, unfortunately, and so I bought this. But you know, um, I can still get a blister with these if I'm doing too many dandelions or yeah. weeds in general. Yeah. So, but these are specific, specific tools yeah, specific for doing that. Tools, but like I said, that 1974 Air Force issue straight blade screwdriver was awesome. So be creative. You. Get the tool that works best for you for whatever you're doing. And it doesn't mean that you have to go out and spend money necessarily. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Dandy diggers are important. Dandy diggers, okay. 
this is a new tool that I've discovered in the last couple of years. It's a grass clipper. I don't use power tools just because I'm anti-power tools and also with the climate change thing that we've got going on. Um, yeah, our... with this garden, you don't have a lot of grass to clip anyway. No, so. <laughs> just the front yard, and that's all going anyway because it's going to be a bee lawn and perennials. Uh, but what's really great about this, this came from an Ace Hardware. This, this rotates, so you can work at different angles ah, okay. to trim your edges. When you're along the house or something like that, so or along a building. When you're along a building or oh, something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, a structure, yeah. Concrete, yeah. So yep. these are really great. Um, and once again, it's Corona brand. Corona makes some pretty great um, wow, mechanical okay. tools. Yeah. And so what else? Garden rake. This is another purchase that I made in 1987. Have had this guard, this leaf rake for forever, and. Um, I think they said that leaf rakes are one of the first two things that people buy for their home yeah, once they yeah, get a new home. Yep. Get a nice wide one. Plastic is great. This has helped at campfire edges. And a long time ago, the handle started twisting, so I stuck a stuck a screw in it to hold the handle. <laughs> I done the it same works. thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right. Oh, and another rake. Yeah, it's hard to ever use this bad boy. Um, had to pick it up for a job that I did, and it's loaded with cobwebs, so you can see I hardly ever use it. <laughs> But steel rakes or garden rakes are really great for smoothing the surface. And a lot of times people tend to use them by dragging the tines down. But if you flip it over, I think you'll find that it's far more effective to grade the surface of your soil and to help get rid of some of those larger clods. So that's really a good way to, um, to go ahead and smooth your surface before planting. These work and the cultivator that I showed you in the beginning also is a great way, is a great way to do that. Yeah, I usually uh, don't use them once I have my my landscaping, you know, once it's contoured right, right. the way I want it. So it's kind yeah, of a new... You don't use new, them very often. Exactly. No. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, what do we got here? Uh-oh. Well, yeah. Everybody needs a guideline. A guideline. It's kind of a pirate term, which <laughs> I like. But these are lines, string lines, for when you're planting your seeds in a row or planting your plants in a row. And um, this one also has, can be used as a dibble. Dibbles are great for dibbles. dibbles. Oh, that's the one that got me. You like dibbles and Well, they're nice to mark out your plants, you know, every staggered plantings or yep. however you need to do it, and it just preps it and then you can drop your transplant in. But these double as a string line for setting your rows. Um, I got a rebar one, I got a thin metal one, but I gotta tell you, my favorite string line is my son's Zildjian drumsticks that Zildjian. broke. Oh. And if Kim Sin, if you're on, you know how this works. You've got a lot of broken drumsticks. You can supply everybody at the village with uh, drumsticks. So these are great. And I like it because they're orange. You can it's easy to see, them, yeah. especially when I forget to bring my string line in when it starts to rain and I got to go. And then two days later, I look out in my garden and go, what is that orange thing out there? Oh, yeah, it's the Zildjian string line. And you so don't trip over the wire. Yeah, yeah so. and you don't trip over anything. Okay, what else we got in here? We have got a soil sieve, which is pretty awesome. Soil sieves are great. Not everybody needs one, but I have to tell you, the folks that um, that have seen me use this, they're like, oh my gosh, I have to get one of these. I use this for my compost. I set it in my wheelbarrow. And, um, oh, okay. I'm taking out my compost. The nice soft stuff flows through. The big thick stuff I put into my other wheelbarrow. So I've got ready compost, ready to go on my garden, all filtered and sifted through, and then the rest of it that's still big in my second wheelbarrow just goes right back into my compost pile and I start the process over again. These are hard to find. This is a super sturdy one, and I bought this probably, gosh, a good 30 years ago, and it's it has been used extensively. And you can get, get them in different size holes and stuff yeah, like that, different? Yep. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm gonna show you is uh, these attachments for the end of my hose. Okay. I got these from A.M. Leonard. So I have a flow meter to monitor the water that I use on my garden. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, that's that's really high tech, nice. Kelly. Yeah, it's high tech. It is. It's high tech. <laughs> uh, this is a, a solid aluminum rain nozzle. A lot of them that people buy, you know, Menards, the big box stores, they're plastic and they only last a season or two. They crack. This guy is at least 20 years old. So A.M. Leonard, you can get a nice rain nozzle. Uh, Dram makes them, and I also have a brass on-off shut-off. And these are these are fairly expensive, but they work really, really well. And again, this is probably 20, 25 years old. I have not bought new tools in forever, 
except for the leather gloves. Well, if you take care of them, that's exactly. a key part of a tool maintenance. Okay, that hose you've got it. It's about 25 years old. It's a Craftsman uh, rubber hose, which is great. And Yeah, buy uh, rubber hoses. Don't uh, waste your time with those but, uh, vinyl but ones. You've got to look because some of them yep. that are made in China have lead in them and they're not recommended for use with food gardens. So you okay. want to be careful about that. And don't drag it everywhere. Sometimes you want to just bury the hose, leave it attached to the house and then bury it for where you want the end to be and then put another attachment on it so you don't have to drag it back and yep. forth. Yep, I see you got a single well wheelbarrow here. Oh my goodness. What and that's what about a, and yep, that's yep. what I've got too. Um, 28 years old this Christmas. Yep. When I was pregnant with my first kiddo. Great I think uh, the two wheel one is more for stability if you have issues or, or to want yeah. not able to carry yeah, that kind I of weight. I can't do a two wheel because it just, they take up too much space. Okay, we got a couple more surprise things here that people don't know about maybe. But what's this, Kelly? This is this is um, this is your broken tool you were using <laughs> the other day, and I fell in love with it. It's perfect. Yeah, it used to have it was it's got a weld mark here. It used to have these other two things, a little handheld cultivator. But I asked you what this was, and you said, "Oh, this is a broken tool." And uh, yeah, I started using it. This is awesome. So when tools break, sometimes they become the best tool ever. It's not, like I said, it's not about buying a new tool. It's about finding what really works and maybe borrow somebody's tools before you go, you know, make a big purchase and see what works for you and see how you work. And, and this then, was, this? this was one of, part of a kit. So this is, you know, as we mentioned earlier, part of a kit. And sometimes there's going to be some weak tools within that kit or ones that you wear out eventually. So, and this is why people go back and buy some more tools every year. But okay. you don't need to with that one. It's nope. perfect the way it is now. Just that it's broken is perfect. And, and kind of a thank you gift that we used last year for our master gardeners is something that everybody should have. And that is, <laughs> a, oh, uh oh, I got to do reverse. Uh, reverse, no, I just, reverse <laughs> image. A kneeler. It's a kneeler. And uh, just to, to let people know, this was, I wish there I we go. Now, now we're reverse. Now, what does it say on there, Kelly? It says, it says something. It says, Olmsted County Master Gardeners. Thank you for your dedication. Ooh, reverse <laughs> image. I'm trying to, what am I doing? We're, okay, yep. Thank you for your dedication. Anyway, a kneeler. And if you're down here on the ground. I've never um, used a kneeler in yep. my life. And I know, because you got to carry some, it with but you. some people need one. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, some people need a kneeler. Yep. So, so um, anything else, Kelly? Um, we cut over it a lot of things. Some people need bug spray and sunscreen. That's kind of a nice thing Yep, to have. and water. A hip flask. A How water, about a water bottle? A water bottle's good. I um, like to keep the sun out of my eyes. It's important for me. I have very light blue eyes and I have eye issues, so <laughs> got to keep the sun out. So we're not going to talk power tools for for those I'm, that are maybe sorry, a little disappointed. All, yeah. yeah, a little disappointed. You were all dressed up. I was for ready that, for it. But again, if you're using power tools, um, it's all about safety. Be careful with that. Wear goggles. Um, wear uh, headphones. Of course, I got a new electric mower, and I don't even need to use the headphones anymore. Well, that's the, nice. The uh, um, so that's that's really nice. So yeah. With that, I think I think we're done, right? Are we done? I think we're done. So oh, we made it through another one. We made it through episode nine. This um, is great. And any sponsors that want to pick us up, just go ahead and uh, what is it called? PM, IM, DM. What is that called? PM us. Just PS. PM us. I don't know. PMS. No. P PM us. <laughs> yeah. PM us. And let us know. Um, but anyway, we'll be coming up with another uh, episode next week. And with that, goodbye, everybody. Talk your day.